But, so are you uh, ready? Because we want to talk. We got to talk about, we got to talk about this book. Our, uh, our leading up to when we post this on social media, we are going to talk about like, is oral sex a deal breaker in a relationship? So to get people interested in thinking and hopefully go grab this book, because we normally will read several books together. Mm -hmm. This was the one that like we read and read. And then he like, whatever it was that you told him, we going to get into that. When he went and got the books and the candy, he want all that on, 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 on video and on tape. I got to have it. The world needs to know everybody. this. Everybody. He'll tell anybody, like, you haven't read Avery Good. And I'd be like, oh, that is so good for you to be plugging her. <laughs> it's not about me. It's not about me. The world needs to hear this stuff. I mean, we this we in a crisis right now. We are there. The world needs to know what's going on. You know What, what better way to entertain each other, right? Hey, I guarantee you there's some people getting tired of each other right now. And I think Avery Goody got the recipe to, to mend all oh, broken relationships. So we're going to get into it. We're going to get into it. Keep I pushing. Love, I love her. I love the books. I love you guys, too. So let me know when you're ready, Mr. Lewis. Oh, I'm ready. I'm ready. Did I'm ready. So the mm -hmm. book, Head Doctor. The book is head, Doctor. There's a there's a part one and there's a part two. Where did where did this concept head part doctor one. Come from? look at you go, girl? Part look two. at you go. Yes, yes ma'am. Hey. So I got the idea from um a, a shrink I used to work. For I mean, I write truth fiction. That's what I call it. I get a lot of my fodder from real life. Um, but instead of, you know, it was a, I worked for a dude. And so in my, my character, I made her a woman because I just thought that she would be a little bit more interesting. Not that I thought that my previous boss was messing with his clients. I thought he was messing with his staff. Ah, that's what I thought because I used to I, I I did everything for him. I did his HR. Um, I was based. I was the office administrator. So everything under that, you know, I I did everything from the hiring to the benefits to even outsourcing, you know, the clients to different agencies for referrals and stuff like that. So I did that. But I, I noticed like if a woman would come in, she would have on a pretty sweater, much like the one that you're wearing when she would come in, you know, for her interview and she would look really well, you know, so good and put together and just so professional. And then he would hire them and they would still come looking like you real put together, professional, maybe for like, two weeks but after working with him i noticed that the shirts get lower the skirts get higher and i'm thinking and then their familiarity with him okay they, you know how yeah. sometimes when we yes. flirt we're like ah, and we let our hand just linger a little bit too long or we laugh at something that's really not funny mm -hmm. um and some women are territorial you can tell when they're messing with the man because right Whereas we once were cool, if I say something to him a certain way, now you got an attitude with me. And me, being a writer, I observe everything. And that's where this idea came from. I was like, yeah, you banging in, boo. I know you are. So, because I'm going to tell you, Kalia, oh, she is a me mess. and Daryl talked about this a, a whole lot. So, yes, she a hot mess, but. And I think I told you this too, like, cause someone said like her hoish tendencies. And I said, no, you know, is she an opportunist? Yes. Um, but she has mad skills and she's in the confidence that she has to do the things that she's doing is the, the part of the character that I gravitated towards. Like, I love that because she felt empowered and about her sexuality and, like anyone who hasn't read this book, like shame on you, because this is, this book is the the, the I'm bomb. I'm trying to tell you, you, you got to go out and get this book. 
So I, for me, my no. my take on Kalia was, you know, you can you don't have to agree with her thought process. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't. You know, she she doesn't care for where she comes from. You know, if there was a knock on Kalia, that would that would be it. But far as her sexuality and and the way she uses it to get what she wants. You know, I mean, we've been doing that from the beginning of time. You know what I mean? Right. So she's playing the, the the hand she needs to play to get where she wants to be. And I yo, I big up that. That's so that's cool with me. You know, as long as you're being true to what you believe yourself is and, and what yourself to be, you're going out to get yours, I'm straight. So um okay. I, I like the character. I, I I like the character. Sometimes I don't like you know, some of the statements she makes as far as, you know, how she deals with her family. But, yo, but let's get to the brass tacks. How do, what's your take on oral sex and relationships? Let's just get to the nitty gritty. Let's just get into the shits. I don't necessarily believe that it's a deal breaker. You know, um, however, um, this ain't no 68, I owe you one. I'm a firm believer. No, no, not say I owe no, no, no. I am a firm believer of reciprocity. Period. Now that's fine. If you don't want to do that, that's cool. Look, you see these nuts? If that's the case, you don't want to do that. These will be the only nuts that I swallow. I that's love, it. I love. That's it. Hey. You don't want to. You don't want to reciprocate. That's fine. But know this: there is somebody out there who's going to do that. So, right. but I, I think that it's important um, in any relationship, whatever it is that you are willing to do or not willing to do, you need to say that off the rip. Don't wait until. Yeah. You know, you get into like, I mean, and there might be an occasion where, I mean, because like for, for women, it's easier for us to take care of a man. Like, let's say we're just driving down the street, you know, and we just feeling a little frisky and we can just whip it out for him. And, and you know, he can't do that for us if we're driving. <laughs> we would, we would all die. For sure. So, you know, but there are those instances, you know, where we can kind of tune him up and he wouldn't immediately be able to, you know, give back. So let's just say that those are some things that happened at the onset of the relationship and he never had the chance to, you know, to get, get us back. Tell me then that, okay, look, I know that you did this and I appreciate that. However, this isn't something that I do. So what I don't want you to do is to remain quiet about that. And you know, you're not gonna, you know, reciprocate so you need to let me know so that way i can stop right Right. because these lips first of all these lips don't touch just anybody let me just put that out there i'm very selective you know we i have to really be digging you um in order to do you know something like that only because i don't know where your stuff is yeah the show the show Right. Right. Especially I'm not Kalia. Mm. Uh, not so, Kalia. So you're not just out Kalia in it. I am not <laughs> that. I'm not gonna. I'm not Kalia in it. No. So no. I mean, my, my take on it is most times before you're having sex with somebody, at least it used to be like this. I don't know because I ain't been out there for 20 years, but most of the time you, you're having those types of conversations before. Right. So you have a, the conversation of, you know, what do you like to do, you know, sexual wise. So, um, yeah, it's 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 a weird thing. I think it's always been kind of taboo in our culture. You know, it, it kind of always has been. So I'm thinking about growing up, coming of age, you know, in the late 80s through the 90s, you know, so we as dudes and men was like, nah, we ain't never going to do that. It ain't, yeah, la, la. We always wanted it, but we wasn't going to do it until we get old enough to be like, yo, that's the shit, yo. <laughs> you got to do it. You know what I mean? You, you got to have that give and take with it. But, you know, so I don't know what's going on out there far as far as that nowadays. But I think, you know, with individuals our age, it's, it's, it could still kind of 
you know, maybe be that stigma where we don't talk about it like like we should talk about it, but you know, it the, ain't nothing the, wrong with it. The one I thing that it. yeah, the one thing that I think when we talk about oral sex and the give and take piece of it, especially being married uh for twenty plus years, is that I'm a firm believer the way I got him is the way I need to keep him. That's right. So if I was that girl in the beginning, that's not something that I need to let go. So even when I talk to other females and we talk about this subject, it's always, you know, you know, I don't do that anymore or I don't do it as often. And I go like, why? Why are you not doing it? Like, isn't that how you you got him? Um what does he have to say about it? Like, are, you, what is your sex life like? And a lot of them will say they, they omit to the fact that I, I'm not actively engaged in that activity anymore. And that's one of them things where like, I raise my eyebrow because as much fun as it is for me to receive, it's even that much fun for me to give. And, and in the book, I, I appreciated that part of Kalia. Like she was definitely a giver. Um, <laughs> she he was a gift. and I loved her for it. So yeah, yeah. He, <laughs> every, read a hey, chapter, there was a nudge. Hey, I was just, like, "Hey, I'm just what? saying. I'm just so, saying." No, so I meant like I, I really appreciated the fact that this book talked about that with her. So now I have something for you, Avery, because. Mm -hmm. When we got the book from you, like you, you wrapped it up so beautiful for us. And then there was this, this, uh, these little treats in the bag. And, and I was like, oh, candy. And Daryl slapped my hand and said, no, 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 no. Avery said, you have to do some things with this candy in order to, you know, experience the book. So why don't you tell us about that? Okay, so I forgot which order it goes in. Um, I think the lollipop is first that you get in the bag, and so then you lick it, and then the Hershey's kiss, you kiss it, and then there is a Jolly Rancher, so you can suck it, mm -hmm. and then there's the bubble gum for you to blow it, blow it. and then my favorite is the pixie stick. <laughs> you swallow it yes. <laughs> and that's how yeah. it goes and I think I gave you my card and I said you know look this has my number on it buy this after you read it call me and thank me later you sure you did you sure you did. did so you sure and did. we've been we've been cool ever since <laughs> hey I'm trying to tell you I'm trying to tell you we've been cool ever since so world <laughs> out there everybody out there if y'all listening to this you watching this yo the the book is dope and and she lives by what she preaches you get the candy and the candy going to change your life it I'm is to, i'm it's telling you right now if you, if you, if you do it right the candy will change your life i'm not, i'm not lying to y'all then that hey this is what we we're only here to we talk only about. use candy once we don't like i didn't need that much coaching i i think after 40 plus years on the planet i'm, I'm a good i'm I, Oh, you good. I, I can teach some classes. Let's just put yeah, it that. You, you, you good. You good. That's, hey. I ain't had, I've never had no complaints. Oh, God. So, Avery, so, like, what's, what's new? What's going to happen? Because I'm sure, like, many of us who have been home, you've been writing some new work. Um, what can we expect to happen next? Um, I'm sorry. I'm, my son just crawled in my room. I don't know if you could see the door behind me open. It's like a ghost. I'm just kind of tripping out over here. Um, well, I actually, I'm working on some new projects right now, but um, thankfully um, with the Head Doctor series, I had booked um, a speaking engagement to do um, um, this forum called Marriage Con out of state but the people really wanted it to go on. So I didn't go there. Of course, we didn't meet, you know, we couldn't, but they did a Zoom thing. So I was still paid for it. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Hello. Okay. Hello. And so, you know, I'm single now. Well, not really, but kind of. 
but I was married. I mean, I don't, I don't profess to know like every single thing about um, being married and stuff like that. My singleness has nothing to do with my inability to keep a man. There you Trust. Go. I just don't have time, you know, for one right now, but I'm kind of crushing on somebody right uh, now. Oh, that's another story. Oh, but, um, okay. But I, 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 this book club is like, oh my God, you got to do something. You got to redeem Kalia, bring her back. We love her. I'm so tired of that little girl. <laughs> she got her come up and she got her come up and you left yeah. us on such a low like at the end of book two with everything that happened i felt like there has to be more more to her See, story i am a i traditionally i am a sucker for happy endings however the realist in me knows that Sometimes not everything, you know, turns out the way that we really want them to. I mean, sometimes things just suck. Some people, they go through things and it really doesn't change them in any way at all. Um, I, I knew someone and I put a lot of different people's temperament. <laughs> I put a lot of different people's temperament within Kalia. Like that saucy, I want to slap the taste out of your mouth. That actually came from someone's daughter who I knew. Okay. To her mother? And she's black. <laughs> oh, what? Oh, no. That's real different. Yeah. That's, that's and I was like, different. well, I look, I was like, the hell? And she would say stuff to her mom, like, well, riddle me this, Batman, like Khalil. <laughs> like, if, I'm like, wait, what? What did you just say? I was like, girl, God has really been good to you. Uh -huh. For real. Because she was like, well, why do you say that? I said, because I'm not your mom. I'd have woke that's up a half the, hour the, later, like, oh, shit. That's what the blessing. I'm not your mom. I said, but while I'm in your mother's presence, if you ever talk to her like that and I'm around, you're going to see four fingers right here. Horrible. Sure. Horrible. So, what that's was crazy. the mother's take on that? She just stood there and allowed oh, that? Yeah. She was one of those. I mean, you remember Amori? Remember when the bad kids would come out and you just swear that the parents, you know, like it, uh, this must be scripted. There is no way right. that a parent would allow a child to disrespect them and talk to them like that. She was like one of those parents. I was like, I felt like I was in an alternate universe or something like that. Like, I just, wow. I don't, hmm. that's crazy. I don't know. Yeah. So, okay, so maybe not Kalia. What about uh, you ever thought of doing a spinoff on some actually, of the characters? Well, actually, um, what I decided to do in my life, because I, I, I don't necessarily like, you know, series and sequels and stuff like that, because I don't really want to force a reader to buy the book. However, I do think that a lot of the characters within the book, they may have a story on, of their own. So you're going to see Kyle. The brother, yep. he's okay. going yep. to he's going to be popping up in the book that I'm working on right now. It's called Meal Tickets, and you know Kyle, he plays basketball. Right, you may not know that, but he does, and so he's on the Georgia Heat, like Justin Wade, who is Kennedy's um, husband. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, or ex-husband, whatever they want to do. Uh oh, um, but they're gonna uh -oh. you'll you'll find Kyle um, in Meal Tickets, and Meal Tickets is basically um, a book about young women who intentionally seek out men of means have a baby 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 become a millionaire that's them yeah, and yeah. they're going to use that money you know for life instead of taking care of the child which and i got yeah and i got that idea from a girl i know here she has six kids one of them just happens to be by a rapper that one child support check takes care of her all the six kids, including the baby with him, her mother, her little sister, and yeah. her other sister who has 10. Stop it. 10. Stop wow. it. Yes. So wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me get this straight. If, if I'm hearing you right, you're saying that one check taking care of all these people? Was. Let me put that. Was being the you know past tense so i don't know what happened i don't know how it happened especially because like he was out on the road or whatever 
but he got custody of this little girl, right? Now she says, oh, well, these are his kids and this, that, and the third. But then my take is if these other children are his, why is he only paying child support for one? For sure. You right. know, sure. that just doesn't make sense to me. You and know, why did like, he only have custody of the one? I don't, well, he, he just got the custody of the one because that's really the only one that was his. She could that's, say all that. That's a book in itself. But he got custody of the little girl. And so when he got custody, you know what happened? The that, child that support. Money. He didn't have to pay no more. I mean, it, it dried up like the Mojave Desert. <laughs> she lost her truck her furniture, her house. She st- well, she even before the child support dried up, she used to steal. Right. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. But she was she was a klepto. So she used to steal things, you know. Um she gotten into trouble, you know, a few times, but she had the money, you know, to bond herself out or whatever. But then she continued, you know, in that behavior. You know, and so after the child support dried up, you know, she started sniffing powder. She was, you know, stealing. She was going to jail for like long periods of time. She ended up losing, you know, custody of two of the six kids. Well, two of the five because he already had, you know, their daughter. Um, Her brother, he took one child. Somebody else in her family took another baby. And then her oldest daughter had the other two. And she was 17. So now she's going to school. She's taking care of these little kids. Now I'm just sitting back watching, right? I mean, and this is all playing out right before my eyes. I was like, yeah, this is a book. I'm only going to change the names to protect the guilty. That's it. That's a book. That is a damn book right there. Yeah. So that's meal tickets because these kids are meal tickets to these women. Right. That's exactly what they are. And then I'm working on another book called You, Me, and She. It's about a polyamorous relationship. They're not married. This just, you know, they're just in a relationship together willingly Mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, And I got that idea from my ex-boyfriend. You know, every time I call, he's in Oklahoma. So I call him and we're, we're great friends. You know, I call him, I'd be like, Hey, you know, James, how are you? And he'll tell me and, um, He'll ask me how I'm doing or whatever. And I said, so are you dating somebody? And he was like, and he calls me yay. So he was like, yay, let me tell you, I got the perfect situation set up, you know? And I was like, well, tell me about her. And he was like, them. Them. Yeah. And I was like, (laughs) hold up. Let me go get my voice recorder. (laughs) <laughs> I knew it was going to be too. something, you know? Yeah. So by the time, and he and I, we were on the phone for two hours. By the time I got off the phone, I had literally outlined 16 chapters. Oh I was goodness. like, oh no. Hey, y'all, my grand dog. I was like, I feel something. It's like the deep blue sea. You know, my grand dog just came in here. But um, I said, listen to me. I don't care what you say. Somebody's not happy. You can say whatever you want, but every right. woman wants to be the apple yeah. of that man's eye. That's because see, that's so, the way it was. I, oh, well, I don't know, you know nowadays. I don't know. I don't. Yeah. I don't know if that's accurate about all women no more. You know what I mean? You hear about these kind of relationships a whole lot now. Like somebody's not happy. What you used to. You know, I don't. I don't know that all women want traditional relationships anymore. That well, they we may, may not all want a ring. But do we all do want to be the only person in some man's life? Yeah. Like, you can't have two number one. You just no. can't. That makes it possible. And we're, yeah, that make 11. Listen, we are emotional beings, whether or not we want to tap into that side of us or not. But when it comes to the affection of a man, we want one man to see only us. And anytime there's two women in a relationship, somebody's going to feel left out. Somebody's going to feel like I'm not getting the same amount of attention as so-and-so. Or you looked at her a little longer than you looked at me. Or the compliment you in it her. A but, yeah. The Stayed in it a little longer. <laughs> yeah. You didn't match I up with I was counting. <laughs> you only gave me five minutes and 14 seconds. You gave her five minutes and 17. I want my three seconds, buddy. Uh-uh. Hello? Listen, listen, I opened up my own door, but you opened up hers. What was up with that? Uh-uh. You, he cannot manage, successfully manage two women. 
Because at, no. at some point, we're going to start taking tabs and notes on, you know, who got what and not it in and all that other stuff. No, nope. emotion comes into play. It might work out in the beginning and it might seem like fun, but trust yeah. you me, it, it ain't going to work. Now, it ain't going to last. Now I want to talk to James. I want to talk to this James <laughs> figure out what's going on over there. I got Listen. to know. So, so the, okay. So, the, so are you going to hold off on, on, um, finishing that book and releasing it until you find out what happened with James and these women, or are you going to make something up? I want to talk to James and see how I mean, this no, is going. We, we, no, I've, I've talked to him enough to um, get enough of the story that I want from him, you know, because he was telling me that, you know, he wants them to have kids. <laughs> oh, that's shit. not going to work. That's probably but, a bad idea. That, that's, that's a bad idea, James. If well, you watch that was a competition. Now it's a competition. I got to have a baby before she do. You know what I mean? I got to have her. Well, what if he really wants a son? You know, so in my book, you know, there's this conflict, right? Like, um, they're, they're cool at first, but the premise of this book, and I have a sentence in this book, and it just explains everything, right? One sentence. God created Eve and him, not Adam and them. Real talk. I don't care if Noah had multiple wives. I don't care if Abraham had multiple wives or any person had multiple wives. That did not come into play until after sin entered into the world. But that is not the way that God truly ordained it to be. Mm -mm. Mm. But in this book... Dude wants kids, right? So they decide they're going to give him a kid. And so he has a a nephew or whatever that he fawns over. And then one of the chicks who he's with, she has a daughter, you know, that he fawns over or whatever. So the, the girl that he was with the longest, you know, she's noticing how he's paying attention to, you know, the other chick's daughter and stuff like that. So that both of the women get pregnant. She was like, oh, well, you know, if he's going batshit crazy over this little girl, he's really going to find over, you know, my baby or whatever. But he was really only into her daughter because he was really into her. Right. So mm -hmm. when the other girl have a little baby and then my other chick who I had to rename because I just realized that the name I had given her was an author who I know my daughter was oh. like, you know, that's such and such his real name. Right. And I was like, hi, hi, hi. And she was in this kind of situation. I don't want her to think about her. Right. right. So I had to change her. So Sophia, look, Miss Sophia, she actually is, you know, she's going to have, she already had the little girl and she's going to end up, you know, with the little boy and the other chick, she's going to end up with the little girl. And she's thinking that she has the upper hand now, but what he really wanted was a son because that's what he really wanted. And there's this conflict there and, you know, somebody's baby might end up dead. And I just, you know. Oh, oh girl. I'm, look, I wanted, I'm, I'm going in. I want to kill the kids. I'm, I'm, killing, to I'm killing the kid in, in meal tickets. I'm throwing the baby over the 17th Street Bridge in Atlantic Station. Oh, shit. Okay. Somebody was pissed off then. I'm gonna have to get meal tickets because that's that's definitely gonna yeah, be. Yeah, well, she book. had um she had Munchausen um Munch Munchausen by proxy syndrome. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and it was just one of those, and I, you know, the sad thing, and not to just go back to that, but the sad thing, I think, in any relationship, um, we need to start believing what people tell us. Mm -hmm. I mean, really, okay. even if it sounds cliche, like even if it sounds because she told him, you know, well. If you don't want to be with me, then you can't be with her either. You know, and women, you know, we hear that a lot sometimes from men like, well, um, if you don't want to be with me, then you're not going to be with nobody else. And we need to really start listening to and believing, you know, what they say, pay attention to the signs and not laugh off bad behavior. Right. Because ultimately that leads to someone being injured or dead. And, and I'm a firm believer that when someone says that those types of things to you, they're not joking. Yeah, like there, there's, a, there's a sense of control right there mm -hmm. that they are not willing to give up on that relationship. And once they say that, they can't take it back. 
Because in my mind, I'm thinking, oh, he really means that. And at some point, that may be harm to me. Not harm to them, but harm to me or someone else that I've excuse me, I bring into that relationship. And that's not a risk that I'm willing to take. Nor is that, mm-hmm. is that a cause for me to stay with you in a relationship either. Because mm-hmm. I, I, I think that's a sign in itself. That's not, that's not ooh, 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 I'm going to stay with him because he's so crazy. No, that's, um, I need to get some protection. <laughs> I need to get my concealed weapon permit because this fool is coming after me one way or the other. Yes. And, you know, man, if I can't have you, nobody will. I heard that in my life. Mm. And I'm glad that I had the foresight and the sense enough, you know, to be like, you know what, this dude, his elevator don't quite make it to the top floor because it doesn't leave out of the basement. It's time for me to go. But unfortunately, someone who he was dealing with, he told her the exact same thing. I saw her, um, she was pregnant. She had like a, a bruise under her eye. And I told her, I was like, listen, if he will hit you while you're pregnant, you know, I know he was probably walking the dogs on you before, you know, I was like, you really should leave sure. him alone. And so then she told me, she was like, well, the only reason that you want me to leave him alone is so that you can get back with him. <laughs> then I was feeling like Tony Braxton in that moment. I was about to you say, know, <laughs> was a man enough for me. Okay. Oh, girl, you didn't know about us back then. I left him. You know, like okay. Unfortunately, though, she's dead, and he oh, killed her. Oh. oh wow. Yeah. Unfortunately, you know that's the harsh reality in that. So a lot of the books that I I write, I I've got a very vivid imagination. However, some things that I've witnessed, some things um, that I've personally experienced, I will put that in a book because I just think the fact is so much better, you know, the fiction. And then, of course, I can spin it and embellish upon it Mm -hmm. or whatever. But one thing that I can assure my readers, you're going to get a really good book from me. I mean, that's my word. Even if it takes me, you know, a lot longer, you're not going to get a book every 30 days from me. And that's real talk. You're not, you're just not. Um, so let's talk about that because, sorry. no, mm-mm, mm-mm. <laughs> because there's a lot that happens in the author world, especially when you have um, authors who are signed to publishing houses and then you have some that are independent, um, independently published authors. So the one thing that I admire about you, so hands down is your grind. Like, I noticed that from the moment that we met, I was like, I love her style. And I always said, if I entered this arena, my grind has got to match everything that I do. Like, because no one is going to do for me the way I'm going to do. So I got to get out there. I got to hustle. I got to sell. I got to be on point, you know, down to presentation. So I've always admired that about you from day one. So when I look at other authors and, and not comparing, but just hearing you say you want you want quality versus quantity because there are a lot of authors who will push out books every 30 days and kudos to them like you know kudos some of them are good some of them you know i'm gonna pass because i think i read that storyline three months ago from you like there's a lot that's happening in our world so like Mm -hmm. what is the best advice that you could possibly give a new author or um even an established author who's struggling and trying to figure out their way. Cause that was refreshing for me to hear because in the beginning I sat here and I was just like, I cannot write a book every 30 days like that. I one, I don't have a time cause I also work a nine to five. So I believe my nine to five is what pays the bills. My, my six to 11 is what builds my empire. So I'm working on making sure that the work that I put out is quality work that, um, with every book, I actually um, grow in my writing. Like I, I want to make sure that I'm going to be consistent and I deliver. So when I hear you say that, like I'm just like, thank you, Avery. Thank you, because I, I started to doubt myself, thinking my hustle wasn't strong enough. But then I look at you, my sister, and I know that it is. I'm, I'm right where I think I should be. So what advice would you give to someone like me who's trying to find their way through this author world 
Like, what would you say? Because there's so many misconceptions and so many, I won't say non-quality uh, works out there, but there are. <laughs> Every looking like, like shit, I, you can say it. Let's talk about it. I just <laughs> don't know how else to say that. I loved your face, but like, like, tell me, tell hey. me, tell me, give me some advice. You know what? I would just tell people, which, you know, someone told me, just create your own lane create your own lane and don't look at what somebody else is doing because that stuff is misleading, you know, and I'm not going to like name names or anything, but a lot of people in the black literary industry, they know that there is a certain publisher who he, that's a part of their contract. You must put out a book every 30 days. The publisher was encouraging the authors to go back in the day and find old books. And these, these authors were basically taking other people's work, changing, plagiarizing, wow. you know, basically changing up a, a name here, a, you know, names and stuff like that. But the work was actually some, someone else's. And then um, they're able to then do that, you know, put out a bunch of books and stuff. But I, I just, you know, I guess the best piece of advice I can give you or anyone is to create your own lane and then know your, your worth, you know, never base your value on the next person. Because, you know, when we go to these right. literary events and there are other authors and they have their table set up, like my books are $15. Right. Period. If I decide to do, you know, two for 25 or give a deal or whatever, that's that's on me. But my books will never go under ten dollars because I have to think about, you know, how much it costs me to get there, that table, you know, food and things like that. And although I may not recoup all of that back, my first benchmark is always to get my my table back, you know. So I have lists of things like I've got to hit this goal, I've got to hit this goal. And it starts with my table because that was typically the cheapest thing. And if we can't make our table back, number one, that's not a good event. But I have to think in along those lines. I went to an event and a girl next to me had a book this thick. It was I tell you it was like 350 pages, and she was selling three books for $15. No. Oh, wow. I'm like, no. oh, you know, you will have to sell three books to make up for the one that I'm selling, and I'm selling books at fifteen dollars. Mm -hmm. You know, just do that. No, don't dumb, don't dumb yourself down. Don't sell your ebook for ninety nine cents. For why though? But why would you sell you know what? But it's out there. Because why would you sell your ebook for ninety nine cents? It's the same. Is I always it wondered that. I, I don't. Yeah, I I've do always not. wondered that. You know how you get six, six, sixteen cents from that. Do you know how much, how many books you have to sell at ninety nine cents to make a hundred dollars? Yeah. And, so, and, and most of the people, they don't do it. You, they don't. So, mm -mm. Avery, so this is the thing that I've noticed. Like we're going for bestseller. We want to be number one on Amazon or number one at Barnes and Noble. So if I can sell quantity over quality at a cheaper price, just to get that sticker, eventually, this is my logic, more people will actually buy it in the long run. So I'm a win-win no matter what. Like I've heard someone say that to me. And That's I was backwards just, oh. thinking though. That's, that is not how things typically go in the consumer market. It, it kind of no. doesn't work that way. I, I, but so, so basic. Based on that comment, what they're thinking is, if they get the word out by selling a bunch cheaply, other people will want to get the book, and then they can raise the price to where it should be, and sell more copies. Is that what they're saying? But and, you, you and have that, to. Yes, you, but, but, this is the thing. They only purchased it because it was ninety nine cents. I don't see someone going backwards. Right. It's one thing if I start at four ninety nine, no, and, that, and so, sell for two ninety nine. But no one should, in my right mind, I'm not thinking about purchasing a book that was once ninety nine cents and you marked it up to to six ninety nine. Like I'm not buying it at that point because if it was only right. priced at ninety nine in the beginning, then that's where it should have stayed. So like you're, you're playing yourself when you, when you market 
your books that way to me. Like that, that to me is, is like poor marketing. It's not helping you grow your brand. And second, you, you're not showing your true value of your creativeness. Right. Yeah. As, you don't know, you are not valuing your worth or the process that you put into this. Right. Well, I don't, I sell very few eBooks in, in real, I mean, I might sell 50 eBooks a month, might, and it's okay. You know, I'm not. I'm not upset with that at all, but um, I'm I'm not I'm not going to I'm not going to make a 99 cent book in hopes that I'm going to become a bestseller because see this is really how this works. First of all, your stuff is not on Barnes and Noble's shelf because you don't have distribution. And <laughs> in order to even qualify for a bestseller, you have to print, not distribute eBooks, you have to print a minimum of like 7,500 copies. And that's the first round. You have to have physical books printed. And then you have to deal with somebody who deals with the the best sellers list amazon does not amazon does not amazon does not distribute your books into brick and mortar stores period i don't care what nobody says if they think that oh you're lying no they don't they don't know they don't they don't only ingram only baker and taylor amazon is going to get your books exactly where it says it's going to be Amazon. On Amazon. I don't even I don't even care to um I don't even care to print books with Amazon anymore. I I moved all of my books from, you know, there used to be Create Space which Amazon already owned and then they mm -hmm. just took over, which I don't understand that because how do you take over a company that you already own? So they did the merger. So now it's Kindle Create. I moved all of my books from that platform, which you can still order some books, some print books over there, but I print solely with Ingram now because I got distribution through them. So I was like, you know what? So Ingram, my price for printing a book is about 14 cents higher than it is with Amazon. But I was like, okay, we're cheap people sometimes be like, girl, I'm not going to buy that. That's more money because it, it looks different. You know, mm -hmm. like, let's say, you know, you're, you're printing a book for $4, but over here, you know, it was three eighty four. That's a 16 cent difference, mm -hmm. you know, but we don't see that we see three and four. We're thinking in terms of whole dollars and that's really not, you know, the way that, right. that, that really is. But then I had to start thinking about, okay, how am I evaluating? this process you know i have to think about what am i going to get over here that i can't get over here and that's distribution mm -hmm. i was ordering a lot of books through kindle create but i was like okay but they're not going anywhere i was getting some decent money you know i'm not complaining about that but i wanted to be able to have a, a bigger impact you know and so now i started my you know i had started my own imprint and I got this invitation from Ingram to come and tour their plant, which is so amazing, by the way. I mean, like you go in, they gave you a tour. We got to actually watch the books being printed, like from the time that it comes upstairs from the computer to the computer downstairs, when the first page rolls out to how they cut the book. I was just That's like, what's up. I was like, oh my God. But just dealing with them, I was like, you know what? I'm going to deal with these people. They do a good book. This is one of the books that they've printed. You know, it's bound great. The pay, I mean, it just, it looks just like it did if I was, you know, doing with Amazon. There's no difference. The quality is there. Um, but the only difference is now because they're, they're distributing to actual distributors. Now, I have a book, Crying Meadows. I don't know if you got that, but yes, I, I, did. I print that in hardback. I don't know if you know that. I didn't know that. I print that in hardback. Dick, very, Dick very, Dick very, fan, Dick that book fan sells for 20 book. Yeah, that book I love hardback books. I, I, yeah, I, I know they're extra, but I'm 
I've always been the type, look, I'm going to pay for what I want. If that's what I want, then I don't mind paying for it. And I love hardcover books. That's, that's my preference. You know, a lot of people, I don't think, do it today because it is more expensive on their end. And, you know, you got to make it up on the back end with people buying them. But I, that's just my preference. I love them. So now I got to go get it in hardcover. My, that, cost, like. my cost to print that book is a little under $7. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that it's a, a great price considering, you know, that I'm, I'm paying like three for this, but I mean, it's just such a great book, but I have my distribution for that book has been bananas, like for real, nice. because, well, I, I, and I think because of the content, you know, cause it, it has like the, the golf, you know, thing I've been selling it to a lot of other people, uh -huh. a lot. <laughs> A lot of other people and so I was like that's fantastic yeah I was well, like that's that's the power of your writing because that means that it's crossover and that's the first thing that I thought when I read it I was like this has crossover appeal like this I, is gonna hit more than just the black community like this is yeah. this is an everybody read yeah and people were like golf is that how they get their grass so pretty and I was like eh, perhaps <laughs> But, you know, people, they're really off into that and stuff, you know, but, um, you know, writing, I, I, I love selling books. I do. But writing for me, you know, this is the one thing that I would do for free. It's just a blessing and an honor that I don't have to. But I would truly do this for free because I love giving people something good to read. And Thankfully, you know, like they you, invest in me. You just touched on something so beautiful. Like, that's what I think everyone's goal should be during their lifetime let's get to a point where we can do what we truly love to do yeah you know and say that's what we do for a living absolutely you know what i mean so i mean it makes you you look so happy you, did it. you look beautiful <laughs> you, you look content and satisfied and happy when yeah. especially yeah. when you talk about writing you get so excited everybody can tell how much you love being an author and writing books for people to read. So, I mean, that, I just think it's great that you touched on that point that you love it so much and you would do it for free, but you're blessed enough to not have to. And that, that I think says a lot to where a lot of, a lot of us as, as, as black folks, especially need to try to strive to be, let's do something, get involved in something that we love to do and, and, turn it into a way to support ourselves. Absolutely. So, yeah, that's great. So I'm, I'm, I'm really glad about the success you're having right now. And uh, we look forward to definitely seeing more of, of Avery Good. So hopefully this quarantine raises up so we can all get out in them streets so we can hook up. Yes, they need to leave it um, closed just for a little while longer. I mean, I oh, think sure. that, no I doubt. think that, um, this this world all of the the health organizations need to try to come together and put their most brilliant people on this to come up with the vaccine you know i was listening to the radio the other day and charles barkley you know he was saying what his his concern is is that even if they do come up with the vaccine are we going to feel about the corona or the COVID vaccine the way many of us feel about the flu shot because a lot of us we don't take it but I took the flu shot. Right. I did. Probably because my company paid us to take it. <laughs> they did. But <laughs> I did take the, the flu shot because I was just thinking, you know, again, in long term, you know, how this would affect me. So if they do come up with the, um, the vaccine, of course, I'll let other people take it first, see how it works for them. And then I will, um, I'll definitely do it because, you know, I want to be here for the long haul, but I'm, I'm ready to get out in these streets. Y'all know I cried when they rescheduled Essence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to touch on I that because I, I saw I, it. I, I was so excited for you for that. Yeah, I saw the um, article. Um, was it last week, Ma? And yes. I was like, hey, did you know they canceled Essence? And she was like, yeah, I saw it. And I was like, oh, man, I know everybody's sick right now because... I mean, that's, that's a huge deal. That's a huge accomplishment, man. And it's a big platform to, to be a part yeah. of. And man, you know, so hopefully they 
we get it back in 2020, but yeah. yeah. We booked several different outside of being in the Essence bookstore. Cause like once you get your time in their bookstore, that's your time and it's over. You don't come back days later or whatever. But in that moment, you have the capacity to, to make a year's worth of in revenue if you yeah. do this thing right, you know? Right. And yeah. so like, like last year we did that. Plus we booked two other events outside of that you know, which was phenomenal. And then I had a paid speaking and well, I guess that's three. So we had a total of four things because I had just a paid speaking engagement where I spoke, but they let me sell my books afterward. And it was a women's empowerment thing. And I think that head doctor empowers women. I mean, it, it encourages you to take control of your sexuality. Tell these dudes what you want, boo. Yeah. Tell them what you're willing to do. Tell them what you don't want to do, you know. Um, so we got now Don't tell to, me what you ain't going to do. Well, that, that's wrong. important. You know, that's hey. important because you need to know what she's not going to do. So then you know how to, you know. Got to keep it moving then. So, when we did the, when I did the speaking engagement, you know, I had to quote Kalia and stuff. I said, you know, y'all need to stop looking for these niggas to pull y'all pants down and look for somebody who's going to help you pull your credit up. And they were like, oh, shit, she just right. yeah. you know, but that, that event, I mean, just being that the energy there from essence i mean even if you were to sell on a sidewalk because we did some old school you know hustling and stuff like that selling stuff out my backpack going from one venue to the next those people just come to spend money mm. they don't haggle over your price they just want to say look what i got at essence um these women they come from around the world i am blessed because we met so many readers who i'm still in contact with whether they're in california new york i mean all across the globe i even sold books to a lady who came from australia so now i can say i'm an international author and it'd be true but she was so impressed and I was like sending stuff and this I send things through you know USPS and she was like what are you sending to Australia I was like books she was like you write books I was like mm -hmm, girl let me tell you about my book so down here at the post office they all know me I'm like girl I read your book and my sister read your book and I'm happy I isn't know. that the best feeling though yeah it is I I just like you, whenever I'm out and about, so like really short story, I was at the grocery store back home in New York and these girls were looking at me and I was like, I don't know what they're staring at. Like, but hello. Like, and then I said, Excuse me. What you talking and then, about? no girl, I had on a sweatsuit. I just went in for some potatoes because my cousin was making homemade fries and mm. I, I asked her if she had ketchup. She said, no, I went and got some ketchup and they caught me at the end of the aisle. And she said, it's you. And I said, me who? She was like, you're the one who wrote that book. And I was like, shut up. You wrote the book. Long story short, they, they made a trial. I had white people, black people wanting to take pictures with me. And I'm just like, I, I didn't even think. I, di I didn't expect anyone to read the book. And, you know, by the time I told uh, D, he was like, people have read the book. People have questions. They, they want to talk to you. So you're going to have to be okay not being open and talking and discussing it because you put the book out there. Now you got to talk about it. And mm. that's where, like, my, my admiration for you, that hustle is so strong. And I look forward to seeing you, you know, on the circuit at these certain events and you know hopefully in august we'll still be able to do uh hustle and the grind. detroit hustle and grind yes i'm hopeful that we'll be there but i know i know i saw an email come across i'm not quite sure what's that look about every hold on because i, I ain't in the loop here if 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 hustle and grind goes down in august if we're back up and running in august i won't be there because i already booked I had I had already booked like when Hustle and Grind was initially in May, I had already tailored my tour schedule. So I had already booked an event in California. It's a two day event. Let me tell you something. Last year, it was just a one day event. Last year, I took all my kids, all of them. I was like, y'all know what? It doesn't matter if I get all my money back. We're going to make this into a vacation. There you go. Hey, babe. 
I got all my money back. Plain but- t- that's what's up. Hell. And that was the one day they were like, you know what? This event has been for the past two years, we've we've done that. They said this event has been so successful, so successful for these past um two years. We're going to make it a two-day event because at the end of the first day, there are so many people that like if the event it last year it ended at six o'clock. At 5 45, almost a hundred people like just bump bum rushed and came in and was like, wow. wait what are y'all doing? Y'all are packing up. And they were like, no, please, you know, and the man, he was like, look, where they were having the venue, he was like, you can have this space for two days. And it is a big space with dedicated parking. And it's Shan, she puts the event out. I don't know what she does, who she tells the folks. Honey, look, I made All of her events are good, though. Because I'm supposed to do the I made so much money. Listen, I was just like, girl, let me help you clean up. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> uh, Miss Shan's events in uh, Texas are good. Um, her Philadelphia event is good. And her New York event is good. Like, I will go to any event that she do because I know that there's going to be a turnout and I'm going to make my money back. So, like, yeah, yeah. I, I'm with you. Go to uh, go to California. I saw that event, but I was planning on the event in Seattle. So, are you going to be at that one? Mm-mm. When is it? Um, October. Like, I think it's the first weekend in October. What's the name? I didn't know anything. I'll, about I'll that. say I'm gonna send you the information. I'll send you the information yes. because so I'm that sorry. one, that one is a good one. I've Everybody who's been, been there has told me is a really good one. Yeah, I've never been there, so I definitely want. I, I'm trying to go places that I've never been, and so I've never been to Philly, and I wanted to do Shan's event in Philly, but it was right after Thanksgiving, and I just I was like, no, I can't swing that because it's right after Thanksgiving. But she said it was a great event, but I had already bought my plane tickets for Cali. And I, you know, I told Michelle, I was like, unfortunately, you know, she was like, I already, I already got my, you know, my plane tickets. And she was like, well, you need to cancel those other things and come to Detroit. But I'm, I love Michelle, but I already bought my plane tickets, right? you know, and I can't see, you know, I don't want to use a credit. I already paid for my hotel up there. I've got plans, you know, I have, you know, a lot of readers and these readers they're like, like a lot like the people in essence. They don't really just haggle over your price. They don't make you dumb right. yourself down or whatever. And I have a lot of people who are actually coming to see me and I really don't want to, you know, disappoint them. But I don't know, like with California being the way California is because they're not budging right, right. now, which I think is great. But I think that she may have to end up pushing it. As a matter of fact, I think a lot of the events that we are still planning on doing are probably going to get pushed. I I hate to put that out there, but it's okay if they do. I would rather be safe than sorry. Yes. And and you know what? It's okay to end the year strong because usually after Thanksgiving... I don't have anything. (laughs) And alive, right? (laughs) It ain't going to matter if you're not alive. I'm I'm more than willing to have fourth quarter be a really great year, you know, for me as far as book sales and getting out there and having the exposure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, alive. Yeah, I'll take that one. We might need, you know what, this might be that time that we need to kind of, what is it, you know, not detox, but you know what I mean? Decompress. That's the word. Yeah. We might need this time, you know, because we've been hustling for, you know, for a long time, mm-hmm. you know, we hitting the road and we're out there and we're like pumping, pumping, pumping. And so this might be a reprieve for us, you know, to kind of like decompress, you know, exhale a little bit, um, recharge our creative, you know, battery and things like that, put out some new work so that when we can just hit the ground running 2021, and, you know, just people be like, you know what? I miss you. You know, absence makes the heart grow fonder. I yes. want people to miss me. Not a whole lot, but I mean, I want them to want to see me. 
or whatever. So I think, you know, we'll be good. I got great re- um, feedback from you from Oklahoma because, you know, that's where I'm from, Oklahoma City. Mm-hmm. Everyone there loved you, ma'am. Oh, thank you. Did I tell you I had to steal my book back from my best friend? I did. I had no. to steal my book back. I had to slide it on like a thief. The shack. I'm like, this is my book. She's like, I, I loved, we had so much fun in Oklahoma. So that was our first visit to Oklahoma. Go. I will certainly go back to Oklahoma. I had a good time too. So no, I, and I did not know that was where you were originally from. So that even made it even more special when I saw you walk yeah. through the door. I was like, get out of here. Yeah, that was My a surprise. favorite person. Look, I, I'm sooner born, sooner bred. And when I die, I'll be sooner dead. Uh, I hear you. Yeah, this is so country. But yeah, I had a great time too. We, I think we did, we had, we did great numbers there. We yeah. really did. We did great numbers there. Um, this was their very first event. Mm-hmm. And so for for that, I was like, I think that you guys did good because I did, I've done some first events before and those will be my last events. But right. I did, I did an event and the people who put on the event were nowhere to be found. Mm. Oh, wow. And so, so how did that work? They were like, oh, well, we left such and such in charge. Well, such and such had no clue about anything like zero she couldn't even tell you where the bathrooms were in the facility and i and that's important Mm -hmm. that's an important place to know but i'm like i've i it's been so long since i haven't made my table back i didn't even know how to process like real real talk Mm -hmm. like i think i probably counted about five people that came through the door literally oh. and four of those people came to see me and I still didn't make my table back and I was just like but where are you guys at and you know then I see you guys on social media and you're bragging about how many people have come out and how great the event was and things like that and then when I come on and I post and was like no this is not what it was for me this is what I would have liked to have seen. Then it's like when we tell the truth about a lot of these events, people, they will tell, oh, well, you're being a hater mm-hmm. or whatever. But all I can say, like, if you ask me a question about an event, there are two type of authors. They're going to tell you, like, you're going to get an author be like, oh, well, how did you like such and such event? They're like, oh, girl, I had so much fun or whatever. You're going to get them, which is the majority, or you're going to get someone like me who doesn't care about the fun. She cares about the funds. Right. See Mm -hmm. the difference? I don't care. I don't come to kick it. If I see you and you know I love you, girl, that's a plus. That is a plus. But I'm not traveling to Michigan to see you. No. We're going to make money. Not unless you're inviting me to see you. See? We we, we didn't. Make right. money. But you you understand what I'm saying. And so yeah. it's like, this is a problem that we have in the black literary, you know, community when it comes to different events or whatever. So I I tell people, listen, don't don't ask me if you don't want the truth, because I'm gonna tell you how much money I made. Now, if an event wasn't necessarily good in that moment, because you know, like sometimes people be like, Well, I don't have any money, you know, right now, or they'll give you this story, like, I'll, I'll support you or this, that, and the third, and sometimes people mean it, sometimes they don't. I did attend an event where it wasn't as, it, I made my table back, but it wasn't as profitable as I liked it to be in that moment. However, before we left that state, we got hit up by so many different people, and they were like, are you still here? I got my money. I want to get these books. I want to support you, and so now here we are. We're driving around, and we're meeting up with the readers, and we're taking pictures, and I was like, this was a good event. Oh, that's great. Because the people really kept their word, but then, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm honest. I'll tell you, you know what? I would, I didn't do as well. However, I got this value from it, so I'll definitely go back. I have to, it, and it's not really just all about the money. I have to see beyond that because it is about, you know, the readers as well, because you mm-hmm. can make a reader even if you don't make a sale. Right. right. 
and that's really what's important. So like, oh, I made this many readers and now they're supporting me and, you know, people I've got now you've created a following. So now you can go back because it will be different. But right. I'm not going to tell you just so we, we can kick it or they put, yeah. oh, they put on a good mixer and we, we mm -mm. No. I don't um, know how to work, no way. Dee said something really important to me in the beginning of my journey. He told me that I needed to go into this process with the thought that I'm trying to gain readers and that because I'm passionate about my writing and what I do, um, that it wasn't always about the money. Right. So, and I said, okay. He said, because the money will come, but you got to put the work in. And he said, I just want you to remember that. So with every engagement that we go to, I go with the intent that I'm going to make readers, which means I have to put in the work before I get there. So I'm doing advertising along with whomever the, the promoters are of the event are. Like, you got your advertisement, I got mine. Like, and then together, I'm going to hopefully bring in some more people for you. I'm going to do some outreaches. I'm going to see what other um, avenues I can take to help your event but also to help my bottom line. Um, Cause it, like you, it's not always about the money. If I can get a, gain a reader, if, if out of five people, one person bought the book, but the other five reached me on social media and they talk about how nice I was, or they show a picture and then they buy the book and then three more of their friends buy a book. I've gained readers. I'm going back now because now I have a solid following in that city. So I'm going back and hopefully the next time I'll walk away with more sales. Like I got to be able to see the process happen mm -hmm. and it always, it doesn't always equate to money right away because I know that'll come. Mm -hmm. And that was something that me and Dee had talked about beforehand, before this journey even started. He said, I want you to remember, you got to put the work in and the money will come. But you need readers right now. Without readers, you won't have no money. So let's figure out how that's going to look for you. So we, we worked on that. So I totally get that, um, that whole piece. Um, my biggest thing right now is uh, just making sure that, I stay consistent Absolutely. like with my writing and through the whole process, I've learned a lot. I've learned some things that, you know, are do's and definitely don'ts um, and where I want to perfect my craft. So I'm going to be a, an, a, a constant um, work in progress and process because I, I really want to make sure that like when people read my book, they can say, I can see her growth. I saw where she came from. I see her growth. I know where she's going. And I believe in her writing skills. So be a fan of that with me. So that's the one thing that I'm, I'm constantly struggling to make sure that I get right. Because if you're a reader from the beginning, I want you to be with me throughout the journey. So. Absolutely. I mean, and again, it is a process. I take con uh, continuous writing um, and creative writing courses, you know, and I, I, hooked up with some vets like Victoria Christopher Murray. She offered um, some writing um, courses. And when I tell you, after working with her, I could definitely, I can see why she has movie deals. I can see why she has 28 books and counting and they're all good. Mm -hmm. You know, we know that there's the 30 day book person and they have a whole bunch of books or whatever. But the you know the quality you know is not there, and so I don't think you know. I want to give people what I want given. You know, like I said before, I'm a firm believer of reciprocity. I'm going to give you quality because that's what I would like to receive. You know, like I did one one event and I had two books. It, I was so proud of those two books, and there was a, a young lady who had a table next to me. And she had two books and she was proud of her two books too. And this was a great event and was like, oh, we're definitely coming back next year. And she did. She came back and so did I. But when I looked at her table, she had 13 books and I only had three. And I was just like, I'm doing something wrong. You know, I thought that I was doing something wrong, but I read one of her books and I was like, oh this is how you 
because I don't think that, I, yep, I don't, I mean, the timelines were all off, you know, I think all that stuff, it matters to me, like, if I write a book in 19, you know, 88, you know, like how Love and Basketball, we know it was, <laughs> they went back, they they found the music that was in that time, I do the mm-hmm. exact same thing, you know, so I know when certain songs came out, I know what the current, you know, the, the slang was during that time, I knew who was not, who was not, and I just make sure that all of my stuff, you know, it lines up. I, I double check. I've got a great beta reader. I'll be right back, ladies. I got to get this computer plugged in. Okay. Um, I have a great beta reader and she, I send my stuff to my beta reader before I send it to the editor because right. my beta reader, she is almost like, and you know, she's like a different level of editing. And she was like, oh, well, do you know that? And she's so awesome. She's like, do you know that you said this about her in the beginning? And so, you know, when you get to the end, sometimes you may forget. So one thing that I started doing was like writing things down. You know, I have a character resume, which is what, you know, Victoria uh, told us that we should do, you know, just like get to know who your character is, right. write down who the, even if you don't put all of these details about the character in the book, you still need to know who the character is. And so I, I know their backstory. So when I'm writing about these people, I'm telling you her story. I'm not giving you all of those, you know, little tidbits. Right. You know, and about her however I know who she is so then I can explain her to you a lot better or explain him to you a lot better and you know those those things they they really matter to me and I can tell that they matter you know to you as well you know in your your books I'm a huge fan of yours I am I'm a huge fan of yours and I I admire you I love you I love your husband don't take that the wrong way but I think as a team you guys work so well together and sometimes i'd be jealous because i'd be like shoot i need to find me a man like that you know because what y'all got is just so solid you know Listen, like, it's that is for, solid. It's, i you told know, you i willingly signed up I, I willingly signed up signed the papers and said i did Look, um i used to have outlaws and all of that l- listen <laughs> i <laughs> It, you know what I, I think it works because um he knows that I've always been creative like I have a degree in theater so I was a behind the scenes person like I did a little acting when I was younger and and I was just like no the money's behind the scenes and at one day I want to write and when he took all those obstacles out of my way so that I could start this journey and I saw how like he's been my fan from day one and he's been an honest fan because he'll be like no this is not right go back Mm -hmm. and you know if I was buying this I want you to do it again in fact with the first book there were so many mistakes with the first book I accidentally uploaded the wrong edited version it yep it had errors I cried and I you know I was like I can't fix it and he was like why can't you and I said well I didn't know that I could and he was like yes you can let's fix it it down. messed it up the second time it left out chapters he said fix it again like he's been my constant rock and then to see him get up at events and sell the book i was like get you i didn't even know it like, just sort of happened that was not planned because i was I like yo listen. you the salesperson i'm not i don't talk to people like <laughs> that just I, supposed like to be people. The muscle. I was like nah b this ain't me and but, somebody you know, came over to the table and just started talking and I had to she was going talking to somebody else and I'm like oh shit like damn all right I just I gotta say something so I just started, I started to talk about the book and uh and uh you know it was uh it was a guy so it was a little bit easier I think to talk about the music piece of it or whatever but yeah, I, I just I fell that. into that, and now she expect me to do it every time, and I'd be like, "Yo, I ain't, I ain't doing that." Listen, I think he get just as much of a kick out of being at those events as I do right now. So, I do because I, no. I get to share it with you. I mean, that's that's really the big thing, you know. I, I we get it's something we get to share together, so it's it's cool that you allow me to be a part of this journey with you. So, that's what's up. Well, I I love that. I do. I love that. I think that you two rock. 
Thank you, dear. When I grow up, I'm, I want to be like y'all. <laughs> Listen. Listen, it, when, it, when my, I got to get my hustle up to be like you, because like literally, you're my mentor. You don't know that, but you're my sister, my mentor. I love everything about you. I love your family. Like, uh, uh, listen, you, you, nobody can come to me and say nothing bad about Miss Avery Good, because I'd be like, hold up, nah, nada, because what I know from you is that you mean what you say, and that's not just because you say it, but it's in your actions. So I appreciate you. So before we get off this call, you got to tell everybody, like, where can they, where can they find you? Where, where, on social media, where can we get your books at? Like, I'm going I'm to start carrying extra copies of uh, The Head Doctor with me, because as much as Daryl preach about it, I need to start selling it for you. Because <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, hey. stop whipping out our books to people. Because no, I don't, you can't borrow my books because I know I won't get them back. Fellas, so if you're watching this, buy your girl. Like right here, here's her copy. Here's her, here's her webpage. Go purchase them right here so I can make sure you do it. Well, they, I mean, you can still get my stuff on Amazon if that's what you do. Um, but I keep so many books here because a lot of people, they order directly from my site, which is www.averygoodsworld dot com or you can hit me up you know um on facebook i'm avery good facebook took the e off my name they is good with an e they took the e off they're like you need to send in your id and social uh i'm not gonna do that she, her name can be i keeps it wet wet logan you know that's not her first yeah. name i'm i'm sorry <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just my feelings about that but they know that that's not her first name but you're gonna take the g i mean the e off of good because okay you, you know what i'm gonna let y'all have that mm -hmm. that's but crazy it's every good with an e and i am the good scribe t-h-e-g-o-o-d-e-s-c-r-i-b-e -E -E, on twitter what's that other one instagram and i'm she good on snapchat <laughs> uh -oh. Uh -oh. She, good. she good huh? she good she all good right. she good we good we all good you know Everybody so that's good. Funny. and so that's what we'll do is we'll put all of this um out there for you on our social media platform too so uh, they'll hit you up because one thing i know daryl is not gonna stop talking about the head doctor mm -hmm. ain't so, gonna do it yeah, every man, every man need to buy this for their girl as a present. And you need to read it together. And read it we together. read it together, chapter for chapter. We was in it. Yeah, it, it makes it a a, a a interactive experience. Wow. Well. because you, know, you can, you know, because <gasps> as you read, and you know, there's certain things going on in it. If it's a good author, right you can visualize kind of what's happening. And it, yeah. it makes it a different experience reading it with another person versus reading it by yourself. And that's yes. why I'm telling these niggas, look, get the book and read it with your girl. I don't care if you know how to read or not, let her read it. You still get to experience it. So for all the, you know, you know some niggas, you know, struggle. Yes. We, we, we can't exclude them. They need some good, good too. Absolutely. But just be on the lookout because Head Doctor Part One, Head Doctor Part Two, they're coming in audio book. Hey, hey. that's so what's are you, up. Are you doing the reading? You know what? We I don't know. I have to see. I'm gonna do a test thing and see see what I sound like. But it's coming. And I'm excited. So, oh, look at you! I, listen, we we keep some handy. They just, stay in the bedroom, even if it's just for a chapter. I'll be like, let's read this chapter again. Hey, you know what? I enjoyed this book. I did. I enjoyed writing this book. Um, just a, a short thing. At first, it was only going to be just the one book, but I had gotten um, a book deal with a publisher and they're like oh my god they're like well, what are you working on i was like well i'm working on this one book called you know here doctor like oh my god i love the title you know and um we went and they were like it needs to be a two-part book so I, I 
husband was like, oh, I know how I can stretch this thing out. So it was really just going to be the one book, but I'm, I'm glad that it turned out the way that it did. Unfortunately, you know, things didn't work out, you know, between me and that publisher and um, we parted ways and my baby came with me. But, um, you know, it is what it is. Hey. But y'all got the book. And we benefited from it. So I ain't, you know, I can't say I'm sorry. It's a topic I, I of conversation say I'm sorry. amongst all couples that, that, that uh, visit and we get together with. We want to know. We want to know. Everybody should be talking about it. For sure. So I can't thank you enough for joining us today. I can't thank you enough for having me. And I'm sorry about the snafu and this name. And that's my daughter. I don't know. I guess I logged into her Zoom or something because she took my computer. This is my new baby, by the way. Uh, yeah. Okay. My account no. hasn't been stimulated yet. And unfortunately i didn't get a tax return because you know i have to pay the irs and stuff but mm -hmm. you know it's all good but i did you know god bless me and how about me a new baby hey you need that. i know it's you gonna be that. some really good material being pumped out oh. on that joint yeah I mean, it, it, that is my desire my desire is to create good books for good people who love to read and I can't wait to read the next two books that are coming out. So we're going to end this. Three. three. Next three books that's coming out. Okay. We'll talk later. Yeah, yeah we will. I'll talk to you offline. Yeah, we'll okay. talk offline. Oh, because I got to tell you about my... I'll tell you offline. Okay. Right. Now well, we got to stop recording. Well, hold on. Mm -hmm. I can, Let me stop recording this right now then. So everybody, listen. Go get the damn books. Men, buy head doctor one and two niggas. Don't be cheap. The freak wall. Don't appreciate it. Don't be Part cheap. Part two is the, the freak wall. Yes. Read them. Read them with your lady. Y'all have a good time. That's all the time we got for Miss Avery Goody. Thank you so much, sweetheart. You know we love you. We appreciate what you do. And, you. and keep up the good work. Keep hitting us with, 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 the, with the head joints. So. We love you, and we're going to cut this record now so we can talk for real, for real. All right, world, peace.